Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. Sorry that I haven't had a video up in a while. I've been super busy with the Harbach stuff. I've been doing the amplifier stuff also. It's my primary work, the amp stuff. So I will always do that until I can't do it anymore. So 42, hopefully that'll be, hopefully it'll be for a long time. So uh, here we have an Ameritron AL811H. It needs a new parasitic board, so I ordered one. I'm going to go through it. It does not have the diodes for the bias, so I'm going to add those to the wall back there. It does not have the bias modification. I'll add the gas discharge tubes underneath the sockets and then also ground the grids directly to the metal. Don't think the grids are. Yeah, the grids are not grounded in this one. So I'll do everything else that needs to be done and I'll go over all of it when it's all done. And it's getting a brand new set of Pentalab 572Bs. Awesome company. Also needs new SO239s. So I'll replace those. I use uh, ones that I get from Max Gain Systems. Really cool people over there. So I'm going to get to work and I will see you guys in a bit. Stay tuned. So I have the socket assembly out. As you can see, some of the clips. See how there's this retaining clip that goes around to keep the tension on the socket clips. Some of them are missing. That one's missing. That one's missing. That one is slipped off. It's broken. That one's missing. So... I'm probably going to just replace all of the clips here. They're just rusty. Looks like they failed. Someone may have plugged the tubes in the wrong way. The clips look okay on the actual sockets, so I don't have to replace the sockets, but I'll have to replace all of the outer clips. So I'm going to get to work. See you guys soon. So sockets have been repaired, added the gas discharge tubes, all four filaments are in parallel so you only need one per side, so you have the new clips. I did replace one socket, ended up it's a different sockets in Eve Johnson, I'm trying to save the guy some money, so uh, cut and stripped the filament leads, I'm going to add the longer screw for the filament choke. Here are the old clips. You can see they're rusted and some are broken apart. So you always want to check those. You don't ever want it open between the grid and the chassis. It's like because it's a big problem. You end up popping a tube. Okay, so I will see you guys soon. Okay, so we're back with the completed Ameritron AL 811H. I'll go over everything I did real quick. So Changed all the retainer compression clips at the base of the sockets. I ended up replacing one socket because I was short of part sockets, so I had a brand new one. The clips that actually grip the two pins were fine, so I'm trying to save the guys some money. I didn't have to replace all of them, otherwise I would have. Here are the little clips. Some are snapped in half, all rusty. I bent the shaft back as best I could. It's bent a little bit. Turns fine. I only had one Allen screw to secure the vernier drive to the phenolic shaft. So I added a screw in the other hole. Same goes for this side. So you saw that I grounded the grids right to the metal out of the gas discharge tubes, brand new board. So from the factory made a mistake on this new board. First off had one too many turns, so I unsoldered three, clipped off a turn, resoldered them, and resoldered them. Uh, one coil was not soldered at all on one side, so I always want to check stuff. That would have been really bad. It wasn't making any connection at all, so I clean the output 
band switch slash rotary switch with deoxid gold, the input rotary switch with deoxid gold, clean the TR slash bias relay with deoxid gold, change the SO239 connectors, tighten up on hardware, change the power switch. Someone went in here and tried to change it at some point and they got it too hot. You can see the leads coming out. One lead just snapped right off when I touched it. So it's all good. Did the bias modification. Change the meter protection diode. This thing is all set. So if you need an ample, oh, one last thing. I also put a longer screw in the base of the plate choke and replace the screw up here too. So I don't normally do that, but when it had that older style parasitic suppressor assembly, it had a really short screw. So I put the split washer in between. Uh, you know, so it was just way too short. I re-super glued the windings. I had to come back a, t a half a turn and then take the enamel off the, the wire and wrap it around here and solder it. So I got the longer screw and like I said, the split washers under here. So thanks for watching. If you need any amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. I have one, two, three, four, five, six other amps here, but I'll get those done this week. I'm just waiting on parts. So hard box stuff, been super busy with that. I went through filling a a whole bunch of orders the first day, a whole bunch the second day, and that's been eating up a lot of time too. So I have a rhythm down with that now. I get them taken care of in the morning, then get on amp work. I haven't been making videos, but uh, I'm going to make the videos again. For some reason, people think I'm gone, like I've gone out of business or something, if I don't make the videos. So, plus the video will show you guys that my work is consistent and and all that so here, here are the old SO239 by the way so but please like share and subscribe I'd really appreciate it this one was made in 1997 so it's an oldie uh, stocking up on parts here I have all the Harbach kits and I'm preparing for MFJ going out of business and going away so um, I plan on doing this until I can't so again Need an amp repaired? Give me a call, 203-892-4119. Who do not work on sweep tube amps. And if you send me an amp that requires eight, that comes with 811s, I will only work on it if you upgrade to 572s. 811s just have too many problems. At least uh, the ones from overseas. Okay, so thanks again. And 73.